The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Rob Fredericks, and Rob is the Executive Director and CEO for the Housing Authority of the City of Santa Barbara. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, Dr. Sinclair. <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here because I know you folks are, you have a lot of projects you're working on. We do. And uh, a lot of exciting things happening in your corner of the world that's affecting all of us, really. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear about that. Sure, yeah. Um, we have uh, a, some great developments that will really, truly help Santa Barbara residents that are under development right now. One is at uh, located at 116 East Coda Street that's adjacent to Veracruz Park. Okay. And it's called uh, Veracruz Village. Uh -huh. And it will be uh, 28 studio units uh, to house formerly uh, homeless individuals. Wow. Uh, and we'll have on-site uh, permanent supportive housing uh, there. Uh, support services to help the residents uh, transition to their housing there and to live there successfully. Um, you know, you can imagine moving from a situation of living on the streets yeah. to housing. That's, that's a difficult transition for people to make. And we don't like to just hand over the keys and say, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these folks need extra support services and just just a helping hand, mm -hmm. just someone to talk to even. And those are the types of services that we'll be providing there. And it's, it's along the lines of another development that we uh, created about 16 years ago now called El Carrillo. Oh. And that's at 315 West Carrillo. That was 62 units on a half acre. And same, same uh, model helping res residents move from homelessness to housing. And that's been very successful. So we're replicating that model there. And then another development that's currently in the pipeline is up at 200 North Lacumbra uh, Street, which is currently, it's a medical office complex. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the leases are expired there for the the doctor's offices and dentists, mm -hmm. we will be completely redeveloping the site and that will be for, that'll be 48 uh, family units oh. serving low-income families. And we haven't built family units for probably about two decades now. Oh. Wow. And there's a lot of families that, that need help with affordable housing yeah. in our community. So we're really excited to get that underway and get that built eventually. And then the other development that we have is located at 400 West Carrillo Street. Mm -hmm. That's at the corner of Carrillo and Castillo. And it's actually city property. It's the, it's the Carrillo commuter lot uh -huh. right off the freeway. Uh -huh. um, people might recognize it from the large tree canopies from the Tipawana trees. Uh -huh. And we've been working with the city for several years now to try and come up with a development to serve the, what's called the missing middle. Those uh, downtown workers that don't qualify for our low income affordable mm -hmm. housing, mm -hmm. but also cannot afford market rate developments. Gotcha. So the city is providing the land for us to build cool. the new units there. And we're planning to build about 63 units. It'll be a mix of studios, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms there at that site that will be directly to serve uh, downtown 
uh, workers that need uh, a below market rent to help be able to have them live successfully in the, in a city that's pretty expensive for people yeah. to live in. Uh, and uh, so we're re very, very excited about those three developments. And those will add to our already, we, we've built in the last 52 years of our existence, um, over 1,400 units spread across 70 different developments throughout the city. So uh, we're very proud wow. of, about how we've been able to provide the affordable housing throughout the entire city for a variety of different folks. We, uh, the majority of people that we serve are, are um, seniors, retired mm -hmm. seniors, uh, disabled individuals, mm -hmm. and working families that just need that extra help with their rental um, assistance in town. Wow. What a what a wonderful mission! Right, yeah, Gosh. yeah. Our our mission really is to create uh, affordable, safe, affordable housing opportunities, while also uh, providing pathways to self sufficiency for families, and also uh, redeveloping neighborhoods in a creative and beautiful way. Gosh, yeah, that is that is just a beautiful vision and. It reality that you're you have created and you are creating there's yes. still more to come yes and that's something we're very um, proud about how we've created these developments throughout the years my predecessor Rob Pearson mm -hmm. uh, set the example uh, throughout the city and how we go into a neighborhood and properly site a new development that will fit into the neighborhood and not only just fit into that that community, uh -huh. but enhance the community's mm. beauty with what we are providing. And uh, the residents that live in our, our developments are very proud of where they live. They're able to hold their head up high and oh. say, this is my community and I live here. Gosh. So, yeah. That is great. I bet you have quite a waiting list for all of those projects. We have thousands of individuals and families on our wait list. And unfortunately, we don't have enough funding, enough land, uh, enough resources to build all the housing that's needed right now. And what we do is we cobble together what we can mm -hmm. from our federal funding resources, state resources, and city resources to build the, the housing, but it's, it's a slow process. And our, as a housing authority, we're a public agency, but we're a separate public agency from the city. Mm -hmm. The city created us back in 1969 <laughs> as a um, recognition that there was a dearth of uh, safe, affordable housing that was needed for the mm -hmm. community. So we're created under the state health and safety code oh. as a separate public agency. So we don't, we're not able to rely on local taxes like oh. the city is for, for their operations. We rely on federal grants for our programs. Uh -huh. our, ma our main essential program is the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program okay. that we partner with the um, private landlord community where we issue vouchers to residents in Santa Barbara that need help with their rent. And so once a person is able to get that voucher, they pay 30% of their income towards the contract rent, and we pay the difference uh, between 30% of the, the tenant's income and the rent that the, con the landlord yeah. needs. So it's a, it's a great income generator for the private landlord community while also providing the needed rental assistance. And it's a great model. Nationally, it's probably the best model for providing housing, that public-private connection yes. of providing housing assistance. Well, I bet those landlords like that because they know they're going to get their money. They get their money on the first of the month on time, direct deposited into their bank account. They love that and they know they have that, that guarantee from the housing authority for that. And we also, you know, we provide other guarantees. We'll provide 
um, security deposit guarantees. So if there's any damage oh, beyond oh, the good. two months rent, we'll provide a certain amount of uh, guarantees there. We we inspect the units once a year. We look at that as a benefit for mm -hmm. the landlords. Yep. So that if there's something that needs fixing, we'll let them know and they'll fix it and the residents are happy. And uh, we have great relationships with the landlord community, the Santa Barbara Rental Property Owners Association. We work closely with them as well. That is great. Yeah. So do you have trouble finding landlords that will be part of the program? Um, you know, we have a we do have a great participation rate with the yeah, local landlord like uh, community, but we're we are limited with the amount of contract rent that we could say the the tenant can pay to the landlord uh -huh. with the voucher. And oftentimes, in a community like Santa Barbara that has a very low vacancy rate and a high demand for rentals they can choose to, to get a higher rent on the open market. Oh gosh. Yeah. So uh, we, have a, we do have a little bit of a difficult time getting new landlords, but we have instituted an incentive program where we'll give signing bonuses to landlords, mm -hmm. new landlords that come on the program, uh, an extra $1,000 for, for signing up on the program. And with those other guarantees that I mentioned, um, we've been able to entice landlords to join. Last year, we were able to get 50, over 50 new landlords uh, participating, That's which is a lot. which is incredible in a time like we've had with COVID and and um, and with that low vacancy rate to get new landlords yeah. to participate. Wow! And so. You, you were talking about funding, so you folks accept donations, financial donations. We absolutely do. Um, even though we're a government agency, uh -huh. we uh, are able to take uh, uh, tax-exempt donations from uh, private individuals and other organizations. We also, uh, back in 2007, we recognize that not everybody likes to donate to a government. They feel like <laughs> we're, we're already paying our taxes to the government. Yeah. Why should I donate? So we created an affiliate nonprofit called Second Story Associates. And that, um, that Second Story Associates is also able to take donations uh, from private individuals and, um, and organizations. We are, that is a 501c3 nonprofit. Okay. And um, we partner with a lot of or other organizations for Second Story to help our residents stay mm -hmm. housed. Oh. Um, a lot of residents have special needs, so we, we partner with Pathpoint, another local mm -hmm. nonprofit. Yeah. We partner with Calm for um, the youth in mm -hmm. our um, uh, in our developments. We partner with United Way for mm -hmm. our after school programs. Okay. We partner with um, with Cottage Hospital and uh, Sencal f and uh -huh. neighborhood clinics. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of partnerships. We recognize that we're really good at what we do. Uh -huh. That's providing the housing, the, the physical housing units. But we can't just provide housing and expect our residents to really find that pathway to self-sufficiency yes, yes, yes. that they need. So partnering with our other uh, nonprofit organizations like Boys and Girls Clubs, all these others that come to mind, <laughs> they help our families uh -huh. succeed in the long run. And uh, it really goes to show that um, why our organization is a success. It's not because we stand on our own. It is because we have these partnerships that we have, um, we've, we've helped to create over the years to ensure that we can get our residents housed and to keep them housed long term. That vision is beautiful and so practical. Yes. I'd yeah. say these people are very, very lucky yeah. to be part of your program. Yeah, and you know, housing is foundational. Yes. If you don't have a place to lay your head at night, yeah. a place to call home, imagine what other chaos is created in, in one's life. 
right? They, you have to think about what am I going to do tonight? What am I going to do for food? Where am I going to right. shower and use the restroom? And if, yeah. if you don't have those basics that we take for granted, yeah. It can cause a lot of issues, emotional and, and physical issues on one's life. And we've helped a lot of homeless people find housing through our developments. Uh, I mentioned the one that mm -hmm. we're working on, Veracruz mm -hmm. Village. Well, um, last year we opened up Gardens on Hope, uh, which is a, um, a development for our seniors that have enhanced services there. We provide three meals a day mm. uh, and supportive what? services and a commercial kitchen. Um, and a lot of residents that moved in there moved from homelessness. You would be surprised how many seniors are living literally without shelter or living in their vehicles. Mm. And then we're able to provide, we were able to provide over 30 of of the units there to people moving from homelessness. And one resident there, I was talking with her and it, it almost, it makes me cry every time I talk about it is, she told me, Rob, without the housing authority providing this home for me, I would probably be dead. Oh gosh. She said, I, have li I was living in my vehicle, uh. I was, seeing this place being built. I was, at, I was living in my vehicle for over three years and it was very hard on her. And she, as she was watching the development get built, she was saying, I wanna live there. Oh. I wanna live there. And we, some, one of our partners, CityNet, uh, came across her, got her an application to, to, to be able to live uh -huh. there and she was selected. Now she has a home where three meals a day are provided, a place to lay her head oh, at night wow. and be, be healthy. And, you know, providing that hope through housing is essential. And that's, that's really what we do. Yeah. yeah. You are in the business of hope, providing yeah. hope. Yeah, providing hope and then making that hope a realization through the housing. Unfortunately, yeah as we mentioned early on in our discussion here, there's so much more that's needed. And this, each jurisdiction throughout the state has to come up with what's called a regional housing needs allocation mm -hmm. that says in the next eight years of planning, we need to provide so many units at different income levels. Uh -huh. And the next planning period that com that's coming up next year for the following eight years, uh -huh. The city has to plan for over 8,000 housing units that are needed that are not here now. That's within the, the city. Within the city of Santa Barbara, how not the in, South Coast. How in the world? Right. That, yes. 8,000. 8,000. And that's, that's another conundrum that we wrestle with. Like, how do we provide that many housing units that really are needed? without destroying the beauty that's known as Santa Barbara. Keeping that, that feeling of Santa Barbara, that architectural, um, that architectural beauty of Santa Barbara that people have come to know. That's why we get so many visitors here. Yeah. Uh, that's why so many people do want to live here because yeah. of the temperate climate, because of the beauty. So how, how we provide for that need and yet not destroy what, what's been created here as Santa Barbara is really a balancing yeah. act. And we have to look for little pockets of development where we can. And that's something my team and I are constantly looking for, new opportunities to, to purchase land to build the needed affordable housing. And there's, as I mentioned, there's not a lot of resources that we have. That's where we can take donations. Yeah. Anybody out there listening that has money to, 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 to donate, donate, we can certainly take in those donations for that purpose of, of purchasing new land to, um, 
to build the affordable housing. Or if they know land, know of land, yes. that could work for you. Either they want to sell it to you or they want to give it to you. <laughs> yes. You never know. That's right. And there are also other tax advantages ah. for um, landowners that want to sell to us. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, no. but there, there's, um, people know of a, what's called a, a, a 10, 1034 tax uh -huh. exchange, 1033, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Under our government code, we can also offer a 1034 tax uh, oh. deferred exchange where people can find like property, but they get a longer exchange uh -huh. time and they can take their, their cash in hand now to find Gosh. that property. And they can also get tax donations for, for donating to That's a nonprofit. Darn exciting. Yeah. Rob, you are just doing amazing work. Thank you so much Thank for, you. for all the work that you're doing that's touch, touching all of our lives. Thank you. And for being with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for being with us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>